Ram Power Days have arrived, which means great deals on the all-new Ram 1500 right in time for football and tailgating season. With 1500's available legendary Hemi engine, you'll have a Hall of Famer powering all your celebrations on game day. See why more people are switching to Ram trucks than ever before. Hurry in for great deals during Ram Power Days. Since 2010, based on IHS market U.S. household methodology and FCA segmentation of conquest data from U.S. new vehicle registrations for CYE 2010 to 2016, Ram and Hemi are registered trademarks of FCA U.S. LLC. And tonight, our favorite show is Iron Fist, Season 2, brought to you by the good people at Marvel, Disney, ABC Studios, and Netflix. Of course, I am your host, the man, data reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Radledge. And joining me tonight, uh, against his will... He, we're going to take the the uh, binders off of him and the gag, and we're going to allow him to speak. He's uh, forced into this by forces he cannot control. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Winfrey. How do you do, sir? And I object to your categorization of this as something beyond my control. Let's be very, very clear. If I just want to be done, <laughs> I can be done. <laughs> Fair enough. Um... Well, he didn't want you didn't want to talk about this, but I begged, I pleaded, and, and you finally uh, rolled your eyes and said, "Fine, whatever." And so here we are, happy man. How are you? Eh. I mean, you know, the Earth continues to rotate, propelled by inertia and the forces of molten metals within its core, providing that the sun's nuclear fission fusion combination continues to move towards its inevitable collapse into a minor black hole as most stars do you know the same on so a what? cosmic scale nothing has changed or by contrast everything has changed but not in a way that actually deviates from any previously determined patterns so let me ask you a question in all seriousness were you not going to watch this season of Iron Fist had I not cajoled you into doing this podcast I don't know. Probably not. Certainly not on the time frame that I did. But why? I mean, I'm, I might have... I'm a little bit burned out on them. Really? On all of these. Just a little. Not horribly, but a little. I mean, they're not I happening mean, at the rate of a UFC uh, card or anything. I mean, we're, talk we're talking the last one was June. Yeah, but I didn't like the last one. Okay. I didn't like the last two. Actually, mm -hmm. I didn't like the last three. Jeez, because I didn't really care for the Defenders. Right. We talked about it. I thought Jessica Jones Season 2 was deep-fried ass. We talked about it. <laughs> it, and it, I, it had some problems, sure. And I was not at all entertained or, you know, enthralled. or I did not find Luke Cage Season 2 all that enjoyable. So, yeah, I'm a little bit burned out on him, just... I've had a lot of bad experiences with these over the last few times we've done them. Well, lucky duck. The next one uh, in October is Daredevil. How about that? I don't know. Uh, Daredevil's been uneven, but it's my second favorite of these, so I'm prepared to give it another chance. Well, at least I don't have to twist your arm to talk about that one. Where we left uh, Iron Fist Season 1, uh, we talked about how... 
you know, critics Dan- suck at their job. Well, that one was that that, that season was definitely marred by the critics not really understanding the character, not understanding the history or the lore, and, and accusing it falsely of whitewashing and having a white man as the titular character, which is what he's always been, and that's kind of been the story, is that this honky uh, <laughs> he stole the birthright of uh, of one of the folks that was actually born in Kunlun. Uh, as a matter of timelines, where we left off with Iron Fist is... Danny and Colleen had uh, gone back to Kunlun only to find that it wasn't there anymore, and they don't know where it went. It got up and it got up and went on walkabout. Um, and then they had the events of the Defenders. I'm getting there. Um, Steel Serpent uh, Davos had um, found Joy, the person, not the emotion, and had convinced her that they should partner up. To bring Danny down, and uh, they would unveil their plan, you know, in the Iron Fist season two, and so that's where we leave our villains. Yes, the Defenders happened. Uh, Danny, along with the rest of the street, no level one wants mo- to talk about it, but the Defenders <laughs> did, in fact, happen. <laughs> the major accomplishment of the Defenders was finally the Iron Fist got to fulfill his destiny by destroying the Hand. Um, Yay! And, and in doing so, they dropped a building Fist on that murder. Greater than Hand, indeed. So they dropped Even a bill. No, you cannot make a fist without a hand, but you can't have a hand and not make a fist. Third attempt, and so they then dropped a building on Matt Murdock. Uh, but Matt hey, Murdock, I got to get my like pseudo ancient Chinese wisdom out here somewhere, right? Yes, but not at the expense of my joke. Damn it! Um, yes, at the expense of your joke. So Matt Murdock's final words to the only defender that was listening at the time, which was Danny, is, "Save my city." And so that's where we find ourselves with uh, with Danny. This is a, this is also after the events uh, of Luke Cage. So uh, if you're if you're thinking about a timeline, the events of Luke Cage happen uh, in which Danny shows up for an episode, and they go take down the, one of the grow houses, and then he goes back to Chinatown. Luke rises to be the king of Harlem, and uh, and then we shift our focus. Back to Chinatown and on Danny and Colleen, uh, where we find Danny this season is he's learned how to use the Iron Fist at will, and he becomes uh, rather enthralled with it, addicted, one might say. Uh, he's tr- he's trying to figure out what his, how to fulfill his purpose, how to fulfill his potential, you know, as a savior of the city. And he's trying to uh, start with Chinatown, you know, make sure Chinatown stays peaceful. And so he's standing between an imminent war between the uh, the triads, the Golden Tigers and the Hatchets. Uh, Colleen has decided to give up the racket of being a vigilante. She wants to, you know, help those in, in need in the area. And that's really it. That's all, you know, they're living together. They're in a relationship. That's kind of where we are. Um, we ha- we have a couple of in- new characters that are introduced. We have Typhoid Mary, who is played by Alice Eve, and this is a not a st- the strictest interpretation of that character. That character had powers, specifically uh, in the comic books. She's <laughs> known as Mutant Zero, uh, among other things. She had uh, uh, let's see, Pyro couldn't. Pyrokinesis, telekinesis, limited mind control, enhanced strength, etc., etc., on top of which she was also a ninja. And I believe she was she was also a lunatic, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Typhoid Mary first appeared in Daredevil 254 and was created by Anne Notenti and artist John Romita Jr. Her name comes from the earliest 20th century Irish-American cook and typhoid fever carrier, Typhoid Mary Mallon. So there you go. Uh, in this iteration, because we're not wasting our time and budget trying to give people actual powers in a superhero show, she's, she's a former soldier with disassociative disorder. Well, remember, we don't have... We still don't have mutants yet. It's happening very shortly, but at the moment, Marvel does not have access to 
the X Men and all the asso- and a lot of the associated uh, copies that that's... include that includes just mutants as a category. But that's a horseshit argument because they have Inhumans. They could have just as and they no go- no 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 one cares about the like the Inhumans don't actually exist. You are now yelling for no for no reason, okay? Because here's the truth in the matter. In Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they established that at any point in the Marvel Universe, anybody can be an Inhuman. They made it, they made it so that the Terrigen Mist was spread so far and so wide and so randomly that any character they want to write that's Inhuman, if they decide um, we're going to introduce this character and they have their powers because they're Inhuman, they can do so. And no one cares because no one watches Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But it's that, not a matter of caring. It's a matter of... That same plot point has never been used for anything else they have done ever in since your, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. introduced it. We're five minutes into the show. We're already having a screaming match because you're driving me crazy. You're so focused on shitting on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I do not care about and isn't the point of any of this, that you're missing the actual point. Which is that instead of giving this character actual powers that she has in the comic books, they bo- they didn't bother to, <laughs> and in- and they could have, and they could have explained it away as easily as she's an inhuman. Ugh. I mean, sure, but then you'd have a bunch of people going, "What are the inhumans?" Ugh. Moving on. Um. Uh, beyond that, there aren't any new major characters being introduced. Uh, the rest are, you know, uh, are a uh, bunch of teenage gang members. Okay. Boy, was that a wasted plot point. Like, just <laughs> what a massive waste of time that turned out to be. Like, I mean, it, it's clear they, they only exist so that by the end of this, you know, however long it takes you to get through this slog of a season, Colleen decides to actually do something again. Yeah. Um, they do introduce the they they do introduce the Thunderer, but he's there as part of some flashbacks, um, and not really doing much of anything. Uh, oh, I should also talk about Ward. Uh, at this point, when the show picks up with Ward, he's um, he's in rehab. He's not really taking it tremendously he's seriously. In yeah, he's in NA. He's not t- taking it tremendously seriously. He's sleeping with a sponsor. And really all he is is harboring a desire to try to reconnect with his sister, who has written him off, uh, and he hasn't really thought much past that. So that's where the season picks up. Uh, let me first... let I know how you feel. You sort of made that pretty evident uh, at the start of this. Um, but let me say, I thought this was a much more mature season than the first one. I thought it was much more balanced. And I thought that I thought that Finn Jones, who plays Danny Rand, um, did a better job of playing the character, and at least the character was written better this season than he was in season one. Um, I thought, you know, as far as what is the season about, I thought that I, I thought the themes and the the uh, the major ideas of this season were more internal. You know, it's characters sort of struggling with uh, what's going on with themselves and not not so much a bad guy doing things. You know, unlike the Defenders, which fucking went sideways real quick. You know, and you have, Sigourney, you have Sigourney Weaver as the hand who's doing evil things and, you know, and, and they're all trying to stop her. This was much more about Danny's internal struggles and Ward's internal struggles and, you know, and while Joy was helping Davos achieve his goals at the cost of, da- at the cost of Danny and bringing him low, um, this was also much more about Joy struggling with the fallout from season one and all the things that she felt and, and all the all the things she felt had been done to her and, and her feeling wronged by uh, by Ward and to a de- and then to a lesser degree Danny. The only one who's really doing something in this season, um, and his issues are Davos. not so much uh, yeah, and are not so much internalized at Davos. Uh, you know, to- and in fairness to Davos, they actually do a pretty decent job of explaining how he got to be the way he is. And they only do, and it's relatively <coughs> brief, but it, he very easily could have been another stupid Marvel villain, and in some respects he is. But with, you know, a couple of brief scenes, 
in one episode, they're able to give you a really good idea about how he got to be as screwed up as he is. And even though you never root for him, at least he makes sense in that respect. Yeah, I had no problem with Dava. <coughs> Without this season, as a matter of fact, it was kind of it. It was kind of fun to see a villain who finally achieves their goal and is actually able to like use the power they've got for several episodes before he's finally stopped. And it's in you know, like normally, like by the time the villain succeeds, he he gets his you know, like like Ares from Wonder Woman. You you were successful for five whole minutes. Then you're locked in Mortal Kombat with the good guy. Then it's over. You're like he got his powers early enough. He got he got the Iron Fist early enough in the season that you could actually see him use it. And you know, and so like, well, what's he going to do with it now? And it, and it turns it, out, murder people. Yeah, he's just going to calmly murder his way through Chinatown. Perfect. Which, which, in fairness, it is very cool to see what that particular weapon can do when it's not being wielded by someone who cares about killing people. Well, I was gonna say, I mean, quite frankly, I wanted more blood. But. Wielded with restraint. Um, so... I want to I, I want to talk about oh let's, let's talk about Danny okay um, I, I want to talk a lot about um, Typhoid Mary because uh, I found her to be an interesting character but I, I don't want to skip ahead to one of the uh, s- second tier characters so let's talk about Danny at first what did you think of Danny this season I mean apart from the obvious by What's which the- I mean boy was this an obvious season. Well, I mean, you're talking about you're talking about the plots, and okay, we're not all as smart as you. Not, some of some of us may not have seen every single thing coming that happened here. So again, I'll ask you. In fair, well, hang on. In fairness to in fairness to my predictions, uh, the ones that of the ones that I made publicly with you that I wanted to document, I was right on two of the four. Mm-hmm. Charitably, two and a half. Had I actually gotten through the entire, I think it was the third episode I was watching. At the time, if I'd actually gotten through the third episode, I would have probably gone for the whole season something like four for seven. I say, is it the ish. worst? Is it the worst thing in the world that a major part of the season was Davos trying to take the hand, to take the Iron Fist from Danny? I mean, no. I mean, it's the it's, I, I, it's the plot to Superman too. But who gives a shit? I no, I'm not complaining. Look, this is one of those things that might seem like I'm complaining about, oh, I was able to, again, like I get an episode and a half into this and go, okay, so we're clearly going to run a depowered arc. That's painfully obvious. The question becomes then, how do we execute it? Is this going to take all season and just drag on forever, or are we going to go somewhere with it? Turns out they, you know, again, the journey is more important in some respects than the destination. Even if it's a journey you've taken before, there's still ways to do it that are different and interesting. In this case, again, my big... I have gripes with some of the writing overall, but I agree with you about Danny being a better written character this season. He absolutely is. In no small part, and again, you and I talked about this with season one, I think that a lot of people just missed out on the fact that in season one, Danny Rand is an emotionally stunted human being. He relates to the world through martial arts. And... That's, other than that, there's a reason he goes around telling people he's the immortal Iron Fist. He doesn't know who he is outside of that. Right. Don't get me wrong, boring and repetitive from a viewing standpoint, but it makes sense, given where the character is, and everyone got hung up on, boy, he just tells people he's the immortal Iron Fist, huh? <laughs> uh, no, it was a major part of his identity. It was, you know. See, here's the thing, and, and they set it up in Season 1, and then they finally extrapolated on it in Season 2... And, and they really fleshed it out, I thought. I thought they did a good job of of using the raw material that they set up in Season 1. Which now, which kind of going back to it, I can see where people thought maybe Season 1 uh, might not have been as fleshed out as it should have been. But I, I'm not going to fault it, because like, it almost feels like Season 1 and Season 2 should have been one long, like, 23-episode season. In because a lot of ways, yeah. This really felt like one complete story. From 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 the beginning of season one to season two, because what a lot of season two does is is you know, and, and Davos really spells it out for the audience and for Danny for that matter is you know whether whether it's 
you being a rich white kid from Manhattan, you know, and the the heir to a corporate throne, or it's being the Iron Fist, you have been searching for years to figure out who you are and what you are and, and what and what you're supposed to be doing in this world. And despite the fact that you have access to both of these things, you still don't know. You still don't have it. And Danny figures that out too. You know, when Danny decides to give up being the Iron Fist, it's because he's realized that none of these things are helping him find who he is deep down inside. And that he almost feels like, like whether you know, despite the fact that he beat the dragon, it was like he's not worthy of being the Iron Fist. That this isn't really his calling, which makes how the whole thing ends a little silly. But we'll get to that. Um, oh, because it ends very, very, very so, stupidly. So I'm going with silly, but sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I like. And, fa- and in fairness, when we get there, like I said, as soon as that. As soon as I saw the ending, I went, okay, so we, we're now going into silly, stupid territory. But maybe that's maybe this show needs silly and stupid because it can't handle... It or, it or the audience, apparently, can't handle more you know, realism or... <laughs> I, they can't handle not knowing very clearly who to root for. I mean, which is mm. one of my big... Which is one of the big things people complained about in season one. Like, who do I trust? It's a corporate espionage story. You're supposed to be paranoid watching it. So, you know, Danny, there's a lot of talk in this season about addiction, which, you know, personally, I really liked. I don't, I think you thought it was a little ham-fisted, and I'll let you... It uh, got there. I'll let you talk about that in just a second, but I, but just my own personal uh, stuff, which I'm not going to get into, I liked the, I liked the fact that it did address addiction and that they use that to to describe what's going on internally with Danny and the Iron Fist and they were comparing it to Ward and his issues with with opiates and things like that and just the, the idea that you know what is that people sort of gravitate to this externalized thing they need to make them feel whole but it never does i liked the I like the description of how addiction feels, and that you and that you is that you can't ju- you you can not only be addicted to drugs, but you can be addicted to something like an iron fist. Now, go ahead. I know you said it was a little ridiculous, a little silly. I think it caps, and it, there is this truly great moment when we're discussing that, and it's right after Danny gets the iron fist taken, and he and Ward are just kind of commiserating. And he's explaining to Ward what it feels like when he's, you know, using the Iron Fist, and he's... Uh, I think the exact thing he said was, it feels like I can break the world. Which, in fairness, might actually be a possibility with the Iron Fist. I'm not up to date on all the lore. But Ward, who only ever, you know, drugs, alcohol, stuff like that, looks at him and goes, you know, I know that same feeling. And that that, that kind of, you know, bonding that they shared over that, that I like. The fact that it kept going later and kept going later and kept going later, <laughs> that's when it got annoying. To, that's when it got annoying to me. Like, if it cap, again, if it stops there, as far as, you know, Danny complaining about his addiction, because, I mean, I mean Ward's, char- Ward's addiction is a big part of his character, so of course it's going to be explored. But... I think it would have been better if Danny, rather than going on about how he's addicted to the Iron Fist, uses that as go uses this moment as going. I, you know, I let me say this: I don't want to become addicted to it, and more importantly, I know I'm using it wrong. I mean, I thought there was a much better justification for his actions sitting right there, in the sense that, boy, I've got this really powerful weapon, and all I do with it is punch people. Yeah, when see, it's when it's ahead. known that you can do more with it. I mean, there was right. that big point in Defenders about a previous Iron Fist utilizing it to seal off a gateway between this world and Kun Lun. I mean, well, th- never this mind is that. Ba- not just a punching thing. Bakudo taught him to use the Iron Fist to heal. Yeah, I mean, th- there's so much that this can do, and I would have just preferred that in the end, his justification for giving the Iron Fist to Colleen. And going off on, you know, his walkabout, which is... I, I don't hate that, by the way. Like, this is a character that doesn't know who he is. They've made that abundantly clear. Really, really, really clear. Like, boy, giant neon sign. 
And then there's someone pointing to the giant neon neon sign going, hey, there's a giant neon sign. <laughs> but if you're going to do that, pay it off somehow, and they do. I'm okay with that, but I would so much rather his justification be instead of I'm worried about becoming addicted to this going, I know this is used for more than punching people, but it yeah. needs to stay here. It needs to stay here and keep the peace. This is expected. You keep you you take it. You keep the peace. I need to go figure out how to do this better. And when I get back, I'm taking it back. Yeah, but I until thought there I was, know what I'm doing. I thought there was a giant missed opportunity there, and and that's the one thing I absolutely agree with you on. Is they established that the Iron Fist was more than you know than a a. a uh, a punching like, weapon. It's not just a bludgeoning tool. <laughs> right. That the Iron Fist is this, you know, is this mystical energy that can do all kinds of crazy things. And then they did nothing with it this season. They did nothing with that aspect of it. They didn't even go back and address it. You know, at no point does anyone remind Danny, didn't Bakudo show you how to do something with this? You know, he and, and then you're right. He never even questions it. He never even brings it up himself going... You know, I I can feel the dragon calling me. I have this power within me, and I know that there's more I can do with it. I just don't know how. I don't feel like there's ever there's been anyone here to show me what the true calling of the Iron Fist really is. And maybe I mean, that's Devils what... even says. Devils literally says at one point, "You don't even know how to use it." Right. The problem, see, the problem with Davos saying that is Davos doesn't know how. I mean, Davos may know how to use it, but Davos is a definition of using it is murder everyone. Kill everything. I would, have, I would have liked to have seen Davos do something different with the fist. And, just, yeah. and it doesn't have to be anything big. Like, even if he just, you know, heals minor injuries to mm. people. Or, just, you know, conjures something with it. Yeah, like, because there's so much more you can do with it. And he's, you know, mentions that... And, it's again, it's easy to kind of point out how he might know that and Danny doesn't. He, you know, Danny left Kunlun and Davos stuck around for a bit. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be that out of line for him to have discovered lore or knowledge or something. I mean, the same way he, the same way he figured out how to transfer the power of the Iron Fist right. gave him some, some insight into using it for something other than murder and mayhem. Right, and, that, and th that's absolutely right. It's like you would have figured that in the studies, in his studies of how to rob Danny of the Iron Fist and give it to himself, he'd have come across other things he can do with it. So maybe using it to open a portal, summoning, a, summoning a mystic, another mystical dragon that he can control, you know, do something with the Iron Fist. Make it, you know, heal himself, make himself bigger, make himself invulnerable, do something. But it's like, nope, everyone's just using it to punch things, and they're not even address. It's like they're mentioning it and then forgetting that they mentioned that the Iron Fist can do more. And but here's the thing I also wanted to complain about because, like I said, I I I liked just about everything that happens with Danny in this season, and as far as. Him struggling with his identity, him struggling with not you know not really understanding the Iron Fist, not really understanding his place in the world with it, um, or his place in the world generally. But then I feel like everything got undercut with that final scene of him somehow having the Iron Fist again and using it to power up two guns. Eh, I'm okay with it. I I'm okay. there's a couple of reasons I'm okay with it. I mean, one, the people running the show clearly just wanted a, a shock factor to go out on and didn't have an actual narrative beat. Two, there's enough. they set up that there's enough of a time gap between when we see them get on the airplane and when we get that showdown in <laughs> yeah, wherever they are in Japan, <laughs> like Hokkaido at four in the morning no. in this crappy bar. I, I mean, I get, I get. Time has passed, and things have happened, and they'll get to it in the next season if there is one. Which you know, so far, <laughs> there's always this question of will there be another season? And nine out of ten times with Netflix, there's going to be another season. Though, just as an aside, who knows how much longer the Netflix Marvel deal is going to go on for? Considering Disney is trying to develop its own streaming service, like DC has. You know, and some others, and they're going to need all the content that they can muster. So, uh, and if they don't need Netflix, Net Netflix doesn't have to say, "Go ahead and do another season." Th it's, it's ABC Studios that's pro that produces this thing, and that's owned by Disney. So we'll see. Yeah, and it's also, I mean, there's also a big question about what type of material Disney's going to want on that platform. And well, they're doing a Star Wars show. 
That's uh, that's been that's yeah, been but made, done by uh, John Favreau. Sure, but it, I mean, like, are they really going to put up you know season one of Punisher on there? I don't know. I mean, I mean, do you really want the kids who are going to have the access to the Disney streaming service to stumble across <laughs> <laughs> the the bloody the glorious bloody mayhem, mind you, that goes through season one of the Punisher? But yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's a good point. It's okay. entirely possible that these characters, they'll just say, you know what, you guys have a good thing on Netflix. We don't have to worry about you know, managing parental controls on our side or what have <laughs> you. Just, you know what, we'll just keep this going. It's fine. It works. We'll see. Um, or they'll just reboot it and dumb it down even further. Uh, but getting, getting back to... Yeah, I just felt like, you know, they, they built up this thing where... And this is... See, I brought up the it, the undercutting it thing too soon because here's the thing. I thought it was daring. It was a daring bit of TV in 2018. I want to stress that. Daring for 2018 that your main character, your main superhero character voluntarily and pre- presumably permanently decides to give up his superpower in favor of trying to figure out who he is. And I, you know, even up to the very end, I didn't think Colleen was gonna event, was gonna take the Iron Fist. I figured, I figured at some point Danny was gonna get it back, and he was like, "Nope." And then Danny's getting on, you know, Danny writes her Dear John letter and gets on a plane, and you know, he's 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 looking for answers. I was like, "Okay, well, didn't see that coming." And then just as soon as I was like, "Well, bravo, Marvel." Bravo Netflix for for really you know for doing something going against the oh you're not going against the grain at all <laughs> that really bothered me eh again me not so much because I mean they're not going to threaten the status quo they're just not they don't have it in them to do it I don't know I mean making Luke Cage who's never been a uh, who's never been the king of Harlem, he's never been written that way, and leaving him as the king of Harlem at the end of uh, Luke Cage Season 2, I thought was, you know, going against the grain, uh, was doing something different with that character and interesting. That's why I'm excited for Season 3. Um, and so I thought they'd show the same bravery here with Iron Fist, but eh, not so much. Uh, anything else on Danny before we move on? Because I want to talk about... Uh, we need to talk about Joy and Ward... And we need to talk about Typhoid Mary. Uh, no, nothing much else from Danny. I mean, again, I, he's a he's a much better written character, all things considered. Again, the some of the stupidity with the overall writing doesn't necessarily mar his... I mean, the fact that Danny doesn't know how to use the Iron Fist is not... I mean, yeah, he won, and then three weeks later he took off. Because, <laughs> boy, was he bored. <laughs> You, I mean, you, you mean all I have to do is stand here? Yes, you have to guard Kun Lun against the forces of the hand and any other outsiders. Eh, I'm gonna go get a hot dog. Uh, boy, I need some of that New York hot dog back in my life. That's right. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, his lack of knowledge about it is understandable and should be something that they can, you know, use going forward. But they never actually do because I don't know. The writers just don't want to. They'd rather have a 20-minute scene with where Danny denounces his own white privilege because critics. I don't know. It's the, look, there are times I'm sensitive to that sort of thing. There are times where I either just don't see it or I don't care enough. I was fine with it. I, you brought it, you, I know you brought it up offline, and I, and I was like, good pickup, but meh, it didn't offend me. I mean, it, it, it didn't offend me in the sense that, sure oh, how dare you? No, <laughs> it, I don't. it absolutely offended you. It I, offe- was not, I was not offended. Use whatever words you like, but it uh, it absolutely tweaked your nipples, and it's one of those. I thought it was stupid. Ah, that's we... not the same as that's not the same as me being offended by it. I thought it was stupid writing. And it offended your sensibilities. Nah, eh, okay, maybe. <laughs> to, to whereas I we live in 2018. Bill Cosby just got sentenced to three. By the way, I I would have bet money. Hard earned money, at least half my paycheck. He got probation. I was waiting for it, and I would have laughed, laughed, laughed. Not because I think that that's what he deserves, or you know, whatever. I just because of the world we live in. 
I, I could I could absolutely see that happening. But no, got three to ten years. Um, hey, we live in a world where a Supreme Court nomination is being held up by unfounded accusations from 35 years ago with no specific date, no specific time, and no specific... <laughs> the only thing... The, the, term, only thing apparently the term is called is... borking, by the way. It, he's being borked. Uh, yeah, we, we live in a stupid time. I mean, just... Right, we live in a stupid time. Therefore, him going on a, a rant about white privilege I honestly shouldn't have affected you at stupid. all. stupid is equally stupid and no like if it bothers me in real life why wouldn't it bother me in the media i consume so ward and joy the media you make me consume <laughs> the media that i do not voluntarily consume mind you <laughs> you said hey we're reviewing this watch it so i watched it and yeah does that color my experience with it sure I'm not going to pretend it doesn't, but I'm also not going to pretend that's not stupid writing. Is that why you're so cranky? Because you, you, because I made you watch this. No. Okay. Ward and Joy, Joy, Joy and Ward, Joy and Pain. Ward was such a hateable character in the first one; it would be would have been hard to redeem him in the second season. But the second season does. He's so much more charismatic and likable this season. You know that even when he does thoughtless things even when he does dumb things he's doing them with the best of intentions and you know and then by contrast you know where you had you know where joy was the one who was sticking up for danny in the first season and was trying to help him at different points and this season she's so utterly filled with contempt you know, she keeps going back to the same line of this guy walked back into my life and everything that everything that made up my life so neatly, all the pieces that were so perfectly in place, like you know, like a, like a like an apartment f- furnished with IKEA furniture was burned to the fucking ground within a matter of weeks. So this guy's showing up. Yes, I'm angry. <laughs> Um, yeah, that double turn. That they, they actually pull that double turn like towards the end of season one, like really towards the end of it. Episode like eleven or twelve was a really shocking. I was really shocked that they pulled that off and then kept it going through here because you know eight episodes into season one, like no Ward, I'm not sure what purpose you serve anymore. <laughs> right, you could die, and the narrative would not be over, and the narrative wouldn't be harmed. To at the end of season two, he might be my favorite character on the show. That's, yeah, I think he. That's a hell of a turnaround. I, he, um, he. It's funny. He actually plays a good foil for Danny. Like I like the I, I like the further adventures of Danny and Ward. I think they they work well together. Oh, that was that was great. That was so great <laughs> when they're just they're just giving each other you know appropriate levels of like brother crap on the airplane. Mm-hmm. Well, even earlier in the season, you know, where Ward's trying to convince Danny to have a tea party. So that he can make up with Joy. And, you know, and Danny is like, oh, I don't know. I better ask Colleen. And there's a beat, and Ward makes a pussy <laughs> whip sound. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Those, the way those two interact, now that they're not at each other's throats, is some of the best, again, some of the best stuff in this, in, in this season mm-hmm. is the way those two interact with each other. It's legitimately great. Right. Um, so, by the same token, you know, I. I it's interesting that where they took Joy, because at the end of season one, you know, Joy is entertaining the thought of tearing Danny down. I thought her, I thought what she would get out of things would be a lot more nefarious. Um, I'm a little confused yeah, with Joy. Was, this she is a badly written character. Well, in, her, hang on, hang on, hang on. In the details. I was going to say, like, her personality... Hang on, her personality's fine. The way... Her her makeup of, of a, as a character is fine. The stuff that... this What they do with her in terms of plot is lacking. Yeah, when Davos pushes her off that balcony, I went... <laughs> and my, my genuine thought was, I know that's not far enough to kill you, but boy, I wish it would. I honestly thought she was dead. No... No. Mark, come on. No. You know better than that. The well, <laughs> only one they were going to kill from main characters might have been Davos. Mm-hmm. And they, even then they didn't. Like, just, no. The only people who were going to die this season are ancillary characters, and we're all just going to have to suffer through it. My poor BB. <laughs> no. He deserved that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, 
You know, it's like, she, like Davos, Davos comes to her in Paris and says, I have a plan to take down Danny Rand. And my first question is, Joy would have been, and what do I get out of this other than, you know, what, you know, the joy of watching him suffer? Like, you know, she she hits them up in the first, I think the first episode with her divestment package. And she and, and her thing is she they start playing up this idea of, oh, she's going to be a competitor to Rand. And it goes nowhere. She gets blocked. And then she whines that she just wanted something of her own. And that really her only part in Davos's plan was getting Davos the tools that he needs to get the Iron Fist. And that was it. Game, set, match. Like, yeah, really? It was, it, she is such a profoundly stupid character in this season. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I don't mean from a writing standpoint in the sense that she's badly written necessarily, although you can argue that. I mean, her character does nothing but stupid things. I just like oh I'm gonna help Davos get the Iron Fist. Okay, then what? What do you mean then what? <laughs> yeah, Actions yeah. don't have consequences. What nonsense is this? This is only an, immu- an immutable tooth of the universe. I mean, you know, it's essentially it's like, you know, what do you get out of Davos getting the Iron Fist? Danny suffers, and that's enough for you. Yeah, I'm good and, with that. And <laughs> look, if if that's going to be enough for you, fine. But you have to be a lot more villainous about it. Like there, there is a certain level of sadism that goes into a character who is down with doing things literally only to watch another one suffer, and right. she doesn't have it. Yeah, there needed to be a scene where where Danny was powerless and she like kicks him in the face or something. You know, she was like, "It was honestly, she needed to have it was a me, Danny. <laughs> damn it, it was me all along." <laughs> yeah, she needed to have a Vince McMahon moment. Thank you for picking up after I stuttered, you son of a bitch. Um... <laughs> But she need, you know, when Danny realized he did, like instead of, you know, instead of the bit where he where he spends all of that time realizing he doesn't have the Iron Fist wrapped in a chain, uh, you know, by the uh, the teenage gang, like that needed to that needed to be him you want, want going to use the Iron Fist on Joy for whatever the reasons are, and he doesn't, and he just kind of falls forward, and she boots him in the fucking face, and she says, it was me, Danny, it was me all along, and then, you know, we're off to the, you know, we're off to the next episode, um, and honestly, they needed to get rid of her character, like, midway through the season, like, once the reveal of... Again, One, like when Davos pushes her off of that balcony, I'm like, boy, I hope you're dead, but I know you're not going to be. Well, that but was she could have died there; it would have been the story would have been fine. That's the thing of it is, is once they once Danny got the the Iron Fist, uh, once Davos got the Iron Fist, and you know the, her and uh, Mary gave her the video. Okay, mission accomplished. At that point, she still didn't have her company. Uh, she she um, she had the patents, but she didn't have. A, um, a manufacturing firm to do anything with, and she had already made the comment of, you know, I, I just, I just wanted to separate myself from this life that that turned out to be a lie and start over again. The next scene should have been her getting on a plane to Chicago or Los Angeles and saying, "I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with all of this. Mission accomplished. Davos got what he wanted. I've got some of what I wanted. There's nothing left for me here. I'm leaving." Instead, they wrote in this subplot it's, where she's she a fr- nothing, she's a sounding board for Mary at at points. That's all she is. Yeah, she's like she's connect- something for she's something for typhoid Mary to interact with. Right. Which I which I've um I, I guess they're gonna. I was reading through like the wiki summaries and I and there's an allusion to more of the more of the further adventures of typhoid Mary and Joy in season three. Whoopity do! <laughs> um, who who is excited about that? Like I'm fine with their with, with Typhoid Mary having more to do in the third season, you know, and Man. that they didn't just kill off this character. On the other hand, I'm kind of done with Joy. <laughs> like she, there's I'm, nothing left I'm here. Done with Joy and I don't think Mary fits. I I don't think Mary fits in with the new directions they might be taking this show. Because again, the way this closes is we're getting into the silly, stupid territory Mm -hmm. and if you want to have a discussion about trauma and did in a soul you know in a you know an army vet i'm sorry doesn't this doesn't she feel like a better fit in the punisher than she does here you you mentioned that before and you know maybe they transition she wouldn't be the first i mean look they've used foggy and things other than daredevil 
So, you know, maybe they transition hey, Misty her. Misty shows up for several episodes here. Dude, Misty's like a main character in this. She's, I mean, she shows up like really early on in the season and they don't get rid of her. No, there's a, there's a lot of female empowerment with her and Colleen. Um, what are they in the comic books? Like the Daughters of the Dragon or something like that? I don't. I, I genuinely don't know. I also don't care. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so like, so why not transition, get rid of Joy and transition Typhoid Mary into the Punisher where she would fit better? You know, or here's a thought, Daredevil, which is who she's a, who she's a villain in the comics of. She'd and, fit in with, and she'd fit in with Daredevil, too, because Daredevil doesn't... I mean, if you really wanted to go over the estrogen levels with it, you stick her in Jessica Jones and you let those two have a bitch off. <laughs> let's see Let's see who's got more trauma and who's crazier. Who's Who's got the better rape story? And really... And the whole thing is refereed by crazy stage mom. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Um, anything else about Joy and Ward? Um, again, like, I just... The horrible inconsistency and stupidity of Joy as a character got to me this season. Because there's one point... There's one point within, like, the span of two episodes where she talks with someone about, you know, the merits of intention versus... Um... Action... And it won't, she tells one character, what do my actions have to do with it? And the other one, well, your intentions don't matter. Right. Like, she literally just does nothing of value. <laughs> well, she, she should it, not, like... She's, she's there because there's baggage from season one that has to be dealt with. And she's there, you know, as a means to get Davos the tools he needs to execute his plan. But that's my I'd point. Really- and After, Davos should she should have left where Davos should have killed her as soon as he got the fist. Like yeah, you're a li- you're a loose end, you're a liability, you die now. Well, but that's the thing; she's not a liability, and she wasn't a loose end. You know, she's I, the one who knows about the bowl, and who know- she's the only one who knows about some of the things he needed in order to do this, and knows how to get them. She's a liability. Well, like I said, I like the way I wrote it better, which is you know a parting. You know, she pays she she pays typhoid Mary. She you know she wishes Davos good luck. She gets on a plane, and you never see her again. That's how I would have written it. I mean, either uh, way, she's gone forever. So let's yeah. just be happy. You know, and, and maybe a, the whole thing would have been better. <laughs> maybe a final scene with her and Ward. I mean, because that whole the the whole bit where everyone's holed up in Colleen's apartment, you know, and and Misty and Colleen are off doing detective work. Um, you know, while Ward is supposed to be babysitting everybody who's, you know, who slowly but surely leave the apartment, which was a terrible Danny, plan. I mean, Danny's been, like, stabbed in the liver. <laughs> <laughs> Not liver, it's the other side. It's his... No, it is his left side. Yeah, he got stabbed in the freaking liver. <laughs> no, so, your liver's on your right. Sorry, he got stabbed in the pancreas. So, I mean, like, she she eventually finally tells Ward, I'm never going to forgive you. I'm done with you as a brother. I've written you off. And even when they're in the ambulance, I th- I want to say in the wiki it says like like they. Uh, I, f- I feel like in the wiki it said that they had made amends, but even in, I feel like in the ambulance though she actually says the character actually says to him something in the lines of just you know go do what you want to do in life, Ward. I, you know, it's like I forgive you. I don't. I forgive you. I just don't want to be around you anymore. Oh, something like that. There's there's so much pointless melodrama around those two characters. Yeah. They're both... I mean, in theory, they're both more interesting. They're either interesting when they're on the same side or completely divested from each other. Um, I want to talk about Typhoid Mary, but the quick thing about Colleen. If anyone's wondering, like, why they gave... If, if, there's probably... People who didn't like the who didn't like the Ghostbusters remake because it was made up of all women who looked at the Colleen thing getting the Iron Fist and went boo. Why are we get-? okay? This was an established thing in the comics. <laughs> I wanted to talk about this really quick. The you whole insist. the whole subplot of the pirate queen of uh, the pirate queen of uh, uh, oh gosh of whatever it is in the Immortal Iron Fist issue seven. We covered one through six on source material. Issue seven deals with the Pirate Queen. 
And so if they're saying that she's a descendant of the Pirate Queen, it would make sense that her character would become an Iron Fist if that is the route and storytelling that they decided to go. It is, you know, in terms of being at least attempting to be consistent with the comics, Colleen getting the Iron Fist is perfectly sound. Okay? I just needed to have that said. No, it is. This isn't... I might disagree with elements of you know, dialogue and narrative with how they got there, but she's. But there's plenty of precedent for this. This isn't just... We gave it to her because she's a girl and one yeah. woman made a lot of money. Yeah, this isn't that. And I think... We're developing but I think Scarlet, that... Need- we're like, no, no, no. We're developing a Scarlet Witch spinoff for the net for you know Disney streaming services. That borders on the pandering. <laughs> this, this, not so much. Yeah, I... I just feel like there's probably a, you know a contingent out there that's like oh the only gay that doesn't know that didn't re- read the Ed Brubaker and Matt Fraction Iron Fist and it is like boo hiss you know they're only giving Colleen the Iron Fist because they're building towards an A Force you know an all female Avengers thing because you know we're living in the hashtag me you, me you uh, era me me too era okay yeah to all of that but that's not this. <laughs> this this has precedent. This is yeah, comic please, lore. Uh, guys, please. We do have to be able to differentiate between those two things. Mm. Um, and, and don't that... get me wrong, they can overlap, but this is not this is not that. This is not again, this isn't pandering, this isn't go this isn't yeah, this isn't any this is not one of those things that I would yell about for you know, in terms of stupid narrative decisions because we must placate people. Yeah. All right, that's about as interesting a thing I have to say about Colleen in this. And she was, you know, she wasn't, she, she's maybe a one or a two on the Adrian Nag uh, scale, if that. So I, I, she didn't bother me this season. She wasn't too much of a nag to Danny. Uh, the actress playing her is fine. Um, the only other, I think the only other no- thing that I noticed about this season with her is they gave her the lion's share of the fight scenes. For a show called they Iron for Fist, for a lot of them. For a show called Iron Fist, after about three episodes, the remaining seven, she got the lion's share of fighting, and maybe that, if you're going to make an argument over, oh, you're just pandering to women, you know, you're pandering to the to the current polit- um, cultural political atmosphere, maybe. But again, at the end of the story, she's the Iron Fist, so you kind of <laughs> you kind of had to. You, you it was can't unavoidable. Just throw that out there. Right. That, that can't you can't just do that ham fisted. That would be that would be more pandering than you know, building her up to that is fine. That makes sense. And in fairness, they come up with a reason for it. Danny spends a non-trivial portion of this season with debilitating physical injuries. <laughs> be that a be that a deep stab wound or a completely destroyed knee or you know, something similar. Like there's a reason he's not fighting as much. <laughs> On average, and it's because he is physically unable to. By the way, did the magic brace make you laugh too? Yes. Okay. I mean, for uh, everyone who complained about you know Bruce Wayne having a magic brace in The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, it was just like the magic. This is the dumbest. Thing, the magic brace is the dumbest thing in The Dark Knight I've ever seen. And the people writing Iron Fist went, "Hold our beer." Yeah. I mean, because if nothing else. They, the injuries to Bruce Wayne in The Dark Knight Rises were old. They were established. Like, this was... He'd put his body through hell, but hadn't been doing so for at least a couple of years. So there's an amount of physical healing that something like a high-tech brace could kind of help compensate for. Not to the degree they had him do it in that movie, but <laughs> the general principle. Two weeks after major reconstructive knee surgery... <laughs> yeah, no... <laughs> And again, Not even close. Again, if he, if he had had the Iron Fist, or they had explained that you know that the essence of the Iron Fist was still in him and was helping him, and, gave, and basically gave him a mutant healing factor, fine. I'll accept pseudoscience in my comic book stories. I'm not Mister Wizard. Um, no explanation in a magic brace. Fuck off. <laughs> and in all, and really, if what we're going with here, and I imagine this is where we're going with this is that while Davos siphoned off the power of the Iron Fist, it never fully left Danny, and it's been rebuilding. <laughs> yeah, I would that imagine that's going to be the explanation. The end. That he's, so, uh, he's still the immortal Iron Fist, and one of the things you can do with it is transfer that power to other people, but you never yeah. stop being the Iron Fist. Yeah. 
if that's where then that would be fine if he then uses the iron fist to heal himself right um uh, it's <laughs> as it stands no it's it's pathetic right Alice Eve as Mary Walker, Typhoid Mary, as I've been calling her, because that's her comic book name, I think deserves an Emmy for her performance. You are entirely too generous. I know. I, I think at least a nomination. I thought she did a phenomenal. Too you're you're too generous. Why? Well, what, well what? hang on, hang on. They still only nominate five, or do they nominate more than that at this point? I don't know. Because <laughs> that matters. Like how many nominations there are matters. I'd have to double check who were the nominees and winners from this last Emmy season and I just don't care to. Best supporting actress in a drama you know on on TV. Come on. I mean how, how many out there are going to be better than her performance as Mary Walker? You were much more enthralled with this than I was. You and I had very different experiences. I'm, I'm judging her strictly on her acting and believe me I saw her in Star Trek. Um Clearly, she's clearly ba- based on the level of performance she gave in Star Trek and what she did in this show. Wow, that woman's got range. She's phenomenal. Um, I, I honestly, I mean, if you're going to be down on her and be like, "eh, she's she's meh," like I, I don't know, I don't know in your mind who the bet, you know, who gave. A what female gives a performance on TV that really tickles your sack? Because like I thought she was amazing in this. Um, as far as what they write for her, eh, it's a little convoluted. But for the but I said but I was I was really into her performance, and I don't want to talk about necessarily the uh, the portrayal of somebody with disassociative disorder because it can look differently in different people. I liked how it was done here. I like the there's idea. There's still not even a consensus that it exists. Yeah, there's that. Um, but I like the look. If you if it's going to exist in a, in, a, in, a, in a show, I liked how it was portrayed here. I like the I like the idea of somebody struggling with the with the with the happenstance that she at times wakes up in different areas and doesn't know how she got there because the other personality is the one that brought her there. You know, and hasn't eaten for days because the other because the other personality is a hippy dippy who you know who's painting and not eating a sandwich. Like that whole routine that she does I, in I that so episode. Want, I, I so want the Mary persona to be like a vegan. <laughs> and Walker's like, oh god, I haven't eaten meat in clear in like three weeks. I have to go to a steakhouse. <laughs> like, like what what do you need to get this job done? <laughs> a, th- a million a million dollars, some automatic weapons, and a roast beef sandwich. I haven't eaten meat in god knows I how long. Need, I need <laughs> I need to eat something that had a soul. Gimme. <laughs> um. Yeah. I uh. I thought she added a lot to the season. Um. My problem. I think my only issue with with her was they were using her as a, as a henchman as a as a mercenary to get from here to there as far as the plot to you know to plot to take down Danny and once that all happened I felt like they were like well we can't, well she's too like and here's the thing I feel like this season went through a series of rewrites based on what they had in in terms of performances like they wrote the season they were they were shooting then they got her performance and they were like we need to write up write more for her to do she's too good to let go of to just to, to just disappear out of the show um cuz the second half of the season it felt like they were just inventing reasons for her to be on there and i'm sorry my, look i my dad is known for not being able to dis, uh suspend disbelief anymore like, he is constantly complaining about things. Like, well, that doesn't seem realistic in a show about fantasy or a movie about fantasy. But he did, he made one po- one salient point to me, which I got to give him, which is when da- when she's got her gun with the scope trained on him in the warehouse and Davos walks in, how the fuck did she miss him? Yeah. I didn't she realize having the like Iron it. Fist also gave him spidey sense. Yeah, that it, no, that that should not at all have happened the way that it did. <laughs> like no. he should have walked in and his head should have popped. Right, his head should have been blown clear off his fucking neck. Is what should have happened. Um, but yeah, nah, she, not not with that weapon. Like that that's a that's a small level. That's an entry wound about the size of a dime nickel. Exit wound about the size of a tangerine, depending uh, on the type. There's of no way she. There's no way she misses him. 
That is very true. <laughs> like no, that that yeah, no, she should not have missed. Um, Unless the Iron Fist does give you spider senses, in which case, show that and we can go with it. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. Do you see what I'm saying, though, about, like, it felt like the second half of the season was rewritten to give her shit to do? Because they didn't want to not have her anymore. I mean, the only interesting thing that she does... Well, let me rephrase. The motivation that she has in terms of... You know... (sighs) Because there's that moment when, you know, one, when Mary leaves the message for Walker that is, you know, thanks for getting me out of that hole. And the whole time Walker thought it was Mary who got them out of it. And then, oh, crap. You know, I want to go somewhere quiet. I want to go to this, like, you know, secluded cabin in Arizona where there's nothing around me and I don't have to worry about any of this crap. And I'm only rarely going to have to worry about being swapped out from triggers because... There's not a lot of cold in Arizona, depending on where you are. There are parts that get cold. There's no sirens. It doesn't rain all that often. I'm going to be me for the majority of the rest of my life. But, oh, wait. If she didn't, and I didn't, there was no one else there. (laughs) There's a variable here that needs to be accounted for. What's going on? That's when her sticking around starts to make sense. It just takes them an extra, like, three episodes to get there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to... This is a personal gripe. I just find it mildly annoying that this this Marvel Universe lacks in superpowers. Like, again, they gave... She has a bunch of superpowers in the comics, and they decided they were going to use her, which is fine. But, I mean, then give her... Give her something that connects her to the comic book character other than the name. They don't even call her Typhoid Mary. Or give an allusion to her having, you know, (laughs) typhoid at some point in her life. She's just Mary Walker. And if you didn't know that they were, you know, during the marketing for Iron Fist, that that the new character was going to be, the new bad character was Typhoid Mary, you never would have known it. And in which case, then why are we doing this? You're telling me there isn't another character I mean, they they invented uh, Ward and Joy out of Hulk. They invented Ward and Joy, from what I recall, out of Hulk cloth. Eh, I mean, it it doesn't bother me as much because I know what they're trying to do with this, with some of these series, and that's you know, super powered beings in in and around less super powered beings. It's just a frustration I have with the entire Marvel cinematic universe in that what ma- what you know the what brings you to the dance is the super powered amazing fantasy uh characters and you know <laughs> like the civil war right they they built the raft you know they built this giant prison <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be empty. Like, that's got to be the most expensive vacant property. Who the fuck is in it? <laughs> you yeah. know? Everybody oh, in the on, Marvel's... come Mark. You're, you're the one person watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Are you going to tell me they haven't sent anyone to the raft on that show? They keep killing people is the problem. It's like, here's Good. the thing. Everybody in the... Be. Everybody, like, like the Vulture, right? The Vulture doesn't have any superpowers. He had a suit. Falcon, suit. You know, like, they're going to have all these villains in Spider-Man, and it's all going to be based on technology, which if they don't have their suit, they don't have any superpowers. Like, you know, and so... Who the fuck is in the raft, then? <laughs> like, what? Who At the, the moment, no one. That's got to be the cushiest gig if you're a high-profile, like, <laughs> prison guard. Really? Like, the like, mo- oh, man, this place is empty. Like, the it's most... The best. The most powerful I mean, fucking... The most powerful inmate they ever had in there was a Scarlet Witch, and Captain America broke her out. Easily. <laughs> That's the funniest thing about that. Like, it's on the middle of nowhere, and, you know, Cap's friends are there. So, I mean, of course Cap's going to break him out because he's Captain America, but mm. the fact that he does it, like, without his shield, without anything, without, like, any support. <laughs> like, uh, Bucky doesn't even have his mechanical arm at that point. It's just Cap, like, swimming out into the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I need I need like a twenty minute movie that is just about how Captain America <laughs> solo takes out the raft. Here's the thing, and even and even in that scene, when you when you consider um Falcon has no powers without his suit, 
Hawkeye doesn't have powers. Hawkeye doesn't have <laughs> Ant powers, Man. period. Ant-Man doesn't have powers without his suit. So it's just like, why do they even need to be in the raft? Why not send them to San Quentin? You know? <laughs> to uh, be fair, Cap would have got him out of there either, but... <laughs> No, this is, this is hardly the point. Like, like making making a, a super powered prison for you know for powered I mean, individuals Tony, makes I mean, sense. Like, Tony doesn't even need to be there because without the suit, he's got nothing. Right. Yeah. So this is my point. Like, we've created an entire you know we've created a universe of superheroes who, if they don't have suits, and they if they don't have suits, they don't have powers, and it's like they keep introducing new characters. With no powers. And I'm sorry, being a ninja is not a superpower. I'm, that, that I'm getting a little tired of. Everybody's a it's, fucking ninja. Look, the I mean, the closest ones you have... I mean, you have Hulk, who doesn't count because he sucks. <laughs> you have Cap and Black Panther, who legitimately have powers without accoutrement. Yeah, but that's, they're just enhanced individuals, then. You know, they're... They're 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 bigger, stronger, and faster. I want people who sure, can shoot lasers some... from their hands. See, at least okay. So we're getting Captain Marvel uh, next February. That's literally, I think, the first Marvel superhero that has powers, regardless of what. And if I swear to God, if it's a thing where she only has powers when she's wearing a ring or when she's got her suit on, I'm going to throw something at the screen. And to be fair, Doctor Strange has magic no matter what. True. Doctor Strange also has magic. Uh, Thor has power, whether or not he's got the hammer. Right. Spider Man. Spider Man has pa- Spider Man has some powers. The rest of it has he's some built powers himself. without the suit. Right. Nothing that would help him get out of a jail cell, mind you, apart from his strength. But so you reinforce the bars to a certain, to enough of a degree, and he's he can climb on the walls. <laughs> well, well, this iter- well, this, yeah, the Spider Man in the comics and the Spider Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe um, is is the iteration of Spider Man where the webbing comes from a suit, comes comes from yeah. mechanical it, shooters. It's, te- it's technological, not bi- not biological. Right. So his only powers is he can st- he can he can stick to walls. He's got super strength and he's got Spidey sense. Those are his powers. That's his, that's his whole power set. Yep. Um, Black Widow's in. <laughs> Black Widow's a ninja. Black Widow doesn't. Black Widow doesn't have power. Luke Cage barely. Luke Cage like sort of has powers. <laughs> yeah, kind of. But it's mostly strength. Like again, like it's the fact that he's invulnerable right. to external harm. Yeah, Jessica Jones is enhanced. Luke Cage is enhanced. Um, when he had it, um, Danny. So, Ray- yeah, like Iron Fist is basically <laughs> it. Like Iron Fist and Thor. Um, but I'm just thinking about like bad guys too. And, like you know, I don't want to. I don't want to run through the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe list of bad guys because that just reminds us of how terrible they are. But most of them are dead. Didn't he? Didn't um? I think all the Iron Man villains are dead, right? Yeah. Um, Jeb- so, uh, Obadiah what? Stane's uh, Obadiah Stane's gone. Stane's dead. Whiplash is dead. Hammer's in jail. Mandarin sort of dead. We're not, um, sure about that. We're not sure about that one. Well the, well, the guy who had the... Um, guy Pierce is dead. Yeah, Guy Pierce is dead. But at least for five minutes, he had powers. Um, you know, he had the extremis. The Abomination's out there somewhere. No, he's not. <laughs> maybe maybe the Abomination's like the one lone guy in the raft. Like, and it would have been great if they'd actually shown that in Civil War. Like, he's just in the mastermind. <laughs> he's just out there fucking playing. <laughs> no, you mean the leader. Uh, He's in. He's playing. He's playing, he's playing the. He's playing the harmonica. Nobody knows. They haven't fed him. It's just there. Um, yeah. All all the villains from Doctor Strange are gone. Uh, no, Mordo's still out there. I mean, well, the the ones that were villains in the movie, not going to be a villain in the next movie. Um, and Dormar- Dormammu is still a threat in theory. Um. Crossbones didn't have powers. He had a suit. True. <laughs> uh, the Red Skull has sort of powers, but the, get, sort uh, of. Yeah, at this point, are we really counting the Red Skull? Anyway. I mean, uh, he came back. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
it just bothers me. Like I, yeah, I wish Thanos had powers outside of the gauntlet. I hope oh, he does. Like, oh, he, we've never seen him do anything outside of having access to the stones. He's an enhanced alien. You know, that power's enough. Um, and in the comic book, he had a helicopter. The old Thanos copter. Anywho. As my, look, I loved Alice Eve in this... He's, in he's this. also empowered by the goddess of death in, in the comics. Like, the reason he's as strong as he is because he's the avatar of death. Daredevil kind of has powers and is a ninja. It's mostly ninja. Mostly ninja. Um, all right, anyway. Th- this, this aside aside. Um, so I really enjoyed Alice Eve's performance as, as Typhoid Mary... I liked about half of what she does in the season. The second half seemed seem to be just shoehorned in because reasons. Um, I'm looking forward to see what they do with her in either Iron Fist Season 3 or The Punisher. Uh, outside of that, anything else on her that you want to talk about? Otherwise, I think we're going to close up shop here. Nah, I'm. Uh, you were much more inclined to discuss that than I was. I'm happy with what you said. Okay. Anything else? I'm going to let you have the last word here. Um anything else about Iron Fist Season 2 you want to talk about? It was a lot of meh. I mean, from my perspective at least. Um, anything else I really want to bring up? Um, you know, I think they could have done a better... <laughs> There's no way they were actually going to try and go through with this, but I think there needed to be a bit of the... Uh, a bit of mixing about you know Davos' killing of... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because here he is doing this, and the cops kind of go along with it as long as he's only killing, you know, the, these you know, triad members. They're like, yeah, you know, gangsters kill each other all the time. What do we care? <laughs> Which, you know, not the most unreasonable position to take, <laughs> all things considered. I really kind of wanted more of a mixed reaction to it because you know, Danny's like, how dare you kill people? I wanted more people to be like, yeah, they're dead. These are terrible people. We're kind of okay with this. I, I just, I really feel like there needed to be some more conflict around that instead of just, because all we got is Danny's moral high ground on it. Right. You shouldn't kill people. Okay, why not? We know these people. We know they're bad people. We know they only do bad things. You're really going to try and explain to me why I shouldn't kill them. Now, you shouldn't kill people. I just wanted a some some other counterpoint to be like, and again, you kind of get it with that cop, but like I wanted them to show that there were some positive effects from what he had done. Right. And you know, maybe he goes too far. He's deeply unstable. Don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating that position. But if you're going to have a character like that take that stance, you need to show that there is that there are two sides to that argument. It's one of the reasons that, you know, people kind of gravitate towards the Punisher. Because, oh, look at that. You're a terrible person who's done terrible things. You know what? I'm just going to shoot you in the head and the world's going to be better. So let me ask you this question as we uh, close out our discussion of Iron Fist Season 2. So we've had Daredevil Season 2. We had The Defenders. We had Jessica Jones Season 2. And we had Luke Cage Season 2. Where would you, uh, among those I've just listed... Where would you rank Iron Fist Season 2? Oh, that's tough. One of the good things about this season is that it's only 10 episodes long. Yeah. So, it, so like, like we, one of the things we said about Jessica Jones was Jessica Jones needed editing, needed to some tightening up. Like, it might have been a, t- it might have been a better it needed season. A whole, like it needed another second half. <laughs> but... Um, well, I, I, we, I think we, we felt like they'd run out of story pretty late in the series and they needed and you know and they they needed about the to so, drop hey, about two or three bonding because Hallmark movie. Yeah, they needed to drop about three episodes and take what was important out of those three and put them, you know, put them in some other episodes. Uh I think that was our major complaint about Jessica Jones was that it was just overly well, overlong. That was the one that was the major complaint we agreed upon. There were others. <laughs> um I thought Luke. I mean, yeah, look, I I stand by Luke Cage of all the of all the uh, second iterations of the Marvel of the street level Marvel Netflix shows stands far and wide as the best one yet, uh, and I and I still I still put it there. So I know for you that's Punisher. 
So let's say no. If we're if we're limiting this to the shows you listed to the second iteration, I then for, I forgot Punisher. Punisher should be in there. Oh, then yes, it's. I think Punisher is the best written. I think it's the best acted. I think it's the it has the best action sequences. I would put it behind Luke Cage season two. You would because black people. You're goddamn that's right. Li- that's literally the that's literally the totality of your argument. <laughs> I'm fine with that, though. Fair enough. Um, so, yeah, it's... Okay, are we talking about objective quality or personal enjoyment? Why don't you... mesh them together? I can't. Uh, I have at least two positions on this that are horribly reversed, based on <laughs> personal enjoyment. I wish I had a pen, because I want to write down my list here, because I tend to lose track of things. All right, here we go. All right, so I know for me... Luke Cage is at the top. Uh, God damn it, this pen doesn't write. (laughs) (laughs) Clearly not a zebra pen. Clearly not. Best pens in the world. Alright, let's try this one. We're not sponsored. That's just my genuine opinion Mm. on them. Alright, so we got... God damn it. This is going poorly. Alright, I got a better idea. I have a computer in front of me. I can you type. You literally have a computer. I was waiting for you to get to that. <laughs> All right, so we got Luke Cage. Then we got Punisher. I know what's last, so I'm going to put that last right now, and that's the Defenders. Um, Daredevil is above that one. Daredevil Season 2. God, I hated that season. Daredevil Season 2. Um, then Jessica Jones was above that. So, yeah, I would say it's firmly no, number three on my list. It's firmly meh, right in the middle of the options available. Yeah, it's Midland. Fair to Midland. So, all right, so that's my list. Uh, Luke Cage, Punisher, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones, Daredevils, The Defenders. What's your list? Um, if we're going by objective quality... It's Punisher, Luke Cage, probably Iron Fist, uh, Daredevil, Defenders, Jessica Jones. Wow. Okay. I. What's your I, personal look, not, enjo- What's your personal enjoyment list? Punisher, 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 Punisher. No. Punisher, Daredevil, season two. Luke Cage, Iron Fist. Though those two might swap depending on the day. Defenders, Jessica Jones. Okay, and again, for for those of you keeping score, we're only talking about the. We're not counting any of the first seasons of any of these shows except for Iron Fist and and the Defenders. All right. I In think, fairness, my top three probably don't change. Um. So, according to the wiki, the second season received mixed reviews. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 54% approval rating from critics with an average score of 5.51 out of 10 based on 37 reviews. On September 7, 2018, Rotten Tomatoes revealed that the second season of Iron Fist broke the tomato meter record with the, with the biggest sophomore bump up 33% over the prior season at that time. The website's critical consensus reads, Better action scenes and tighter pacing elevate Iron Fist's second season, but it remains a lesser light among MCU shows. That seems a generally fair assessment. Yeah, I don't have a major problem in the world with that. All right. Uh, that... no, we had problems with the with the critical analysis of the first season because it was stupid. And it's even it gets even worse when you realize that the majority of those opinions on season one were based on having access to only what the first six episodes or so. Yeah. It's, it's stupid. <laughs> you can't possibly get <laughs> get a a fair opinion of a television series, especially one that drops all in a row like that under those circumstances. I mean, I think if you take... It was actually BoJack that started that... that changed the uh, the process for a lot of websites on that because if you only take the first six episodes of season one of BoJack Horseman, it's fair to Midland. It's clever, but you don't really get it. If you get the whole season, it's great. And it only gets better over time. I mean, I think seasons two through seasons two through five. We did we just wrap up six? I think it's wrapped up six. Like again, seasons two through six, all of them have ratings of between ninety-eight and a hundred percent. 
because you actually take the whole darn season into perspective. All right. Uh, last week was Predator Week all week long here on the Rattlers and Broadcasting Network. What uh, a terrible decision that was on your part. <laughs> Shut up. We did. Uh, <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> we did Archie versus Predator on Screaming Boy. Uh, as Rob just alluded to, we reviewed The Predator uh, from Shane Black on Damn You Hollywood. Uh, there was no Corporal Clani review because lawyers. And then finally, Sean and I did an on-trial for the Robert Rodriguez Predators. This week, uh, uh, yesterday's source material, as I mentioned before, was the Ed Brubaker and Matt Fraction, The Immortal Iron Fist, issues one through six. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be reviewing the new Therapy album. And um, next week... Oh, uh, by the way, uh, check out our commentary of Over the Top. Myself, Ronnie Adams, and Pat Mullen, Mr. Toxic Masculinity, uh, sat down, we watched Over the Top, and we shared our thoughts on it, so that was fun. That's in the archives now. Along Boy, the- you, have to be in the, you really have to be in the right frame of mind to enjoy <laughs> that movie, but if you are, it's great. It's so good. Um, next week, we've got uh, Dracula's Gauntlet on source material as we kick off uh, Halloween all month long on the Rattle and Broadcasting Network. Myself and Jesse Starcher will be doing a TV party for Ozark Season 2. Um, it's covers month all it's month long. It's scary because it stars Jason Bateman. There you go. Um, it's covers month all month long on the Metal Hammer of Doom as we celebrate Halloween all month long. So we'll be looking at Power Glove Continue. And uh, just announced, just scheduled, given that Bill Cosby received his sentence today, finally, for... Uh, sexually assaulting a woman in 2004 and that is the only thing he got sentenced on despite the 109 other women that came out and said he touched me and drugged me uh he only got sentenced on this one particular case three to ten years we're going to talk about it it's the rise and fall of bill cosby on the screaming boy podcast hosted by the one and only ronnie adams don't you still every now and then for st- for stories like that? Don't you wish you just had the whiskey rebellion back so you could just have an excuse to talk about whatever you wanted to talk about? I mean, that's kind of what the screaming screaming boy has become. I, I mean, I generally have to, you know, I, it doesn't take too much, much arm twisting on Ronnie's part. So yeah, it's it's fine. Whether we call it screaming boy or we call it whiskey rebellion, um, generally speaking, if there's something I really want to talk about bad enough, Ronnie's usually open to it. Um, that's why we keep him around. The following week... <laughs> I was about to make such a bad joke. <laughs> the, the following week, um, Jason Teasley will be joining us for not one but two shows. We'll have uh, Venom, Lethal Protector, on October 8th. And then he'll be... <laughs> and then he'll be <laughs> really? And then that's the one you chose? That's the one we chose. Um, and then he'll be joining us on <laughs> Damn You... <laughs> he'll be joining us on Damn You Hollywood... Uh, as we review the Tom Hardy feature from Sony, Venom, and then on boy, uh, it's gonna suck. <laughs> boy, is that movie gonna suck! <laughs> and then on the tenth of October is Mystic Prophecy, hot stuff, baby, monuments uncovered. All right, you, you, Robert Winfrey, you, 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 tell them where you can find your stuff. Uh, the most recent episode of the four one one Ground and Pound Radio Show is about sixty minutes of me talking to myself. Uh, it's just a review of UFC Fight Night 137, which was, meh, it was long. God, it was long. It was 14 fights long. Um, I, was drinking, some... I was drinking wine and eating fish tacos. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, I don't drink wine and I hate fish, so you put me in a real conundrum where it's something that I would not want to do in the context that you presented it, but it also wasn't that event so I kind of, that's such a weird place for me to be it's like like Most... I'm jealous that you're not doing this but I don't want to do what you're doing pretty much <laughs> um so again you can get my thoughts on that it was again it was just kind of an event uh, I also share my thoughts on the UFC making Joanna Yanjacek versus Valentina Shevchenko for the women's flyweight title it's a good idea. I like the fight. That is the co-main event for UFC 231. Uh, UFC 230 still doesn't have a main event. Uh, so I talk a little bit about that, but 
in theory, John Jones could headline that because John finally got his 15-month suspension from USADA sorted out, which means he will be eligible to return to action on October 29th, and UFC 230 is November something or other. Third. So, in theory, John could fight on that card. So, is there a pig hostage they can feed him that people will pay money for? I mean, it's John. It's the return of John Jones. In theory, anyone would do, but there's also a real problem about you know, kind of finding him an opponent. Daniel Cormier's got a hand injury, and he's not going to take that fight anyway. He's going to sit until he gets his easy money fight with Brock Lesnar. Right. Because, and I, bear in mind, I hate that, but I don't blame DC one bit. John Jones kicked his ass twice. Brock Lesnar sucks. And he's not going to... Neither one is an, is appreciably a bigger draw than the other. <laughs> like if, if you were going to make a significantly greater portion of money for the John Jones fight, he might take it even though he just lose again. But if you're going to make about the same money to fight a guy who knocked you out cold last time or Brock Lesnar, who, as I mentioned before, sucks, I know what I'm doing, and I don't blame DC for doing it. I think Gustafson's still out with an injury. It's it's just weird. I mean, in fairness, there are two people on that card fighting each other who have now just said, hey, make us the main event. Because both both Nate Diaz and Dustin Poirier seem down for the idea of them fighting for the inaugural 165-pound title. Is there really a 165-pound title? No, but the UFC wants title fights to main event pay-per-views. Okay. Well, so at this that, point, that they should fair. stop creating titles for weight classes. Just start doing what wrestling does. Make it a TV title. Call it, yeah, that's it, stupid. Make it the intercontinental title. Really? When the, these fucking belts don't mean anything. Does it really matter what their names are? Yes, because you can't. You can still only fight so frequently unless you want to start fixing things. Did I tell you that you're that you're reviewing Daredevil on October 25th? Yes. Okay. I was aware of that. Thank you. You're welcome. But anyway, apart from that tangent, so you can find me giving brief thoughts on that and the hilarious hypocrisy of MMA fans pertaining to the John Jones situation. Because part of the reason John only got 15 months for a second suspension for a second issue, for a second violation was a he was found not to be at fault and that what he took didn't actually have a performance enhancing benefit, which means in my estimation he shouldn't have been punished at all, considering that's what you're trying to block. But hey, you saw it sucks. <laughs> But he also apparently gave them information to help with investigations and whatnot, and now everyone's crying foul because he snitched. Like, do you want? If you want a clean sport, shouldn't you be happy when fighters turn in people who uh, other people who are cheating, or are you just you know blind hypocrites about this stuff? I'm not the biggest. Again, John as a post as a person might be you know a giant bag of dicks, <laughs> but have some in, have some intellectual consistency here, people. You're asking a lot. No, I'm really... That's the that's the profoundly sad thing. I'm not. <laughs> if you're honest about this and say, boy, I hate John Jones, I wish he'd been suspended for four years, fair play. I have nothing to say to that. But if your cry is, oh, he snitched, but I'm so pro-USADA and want a clean sport, then you should be in favor of fighters contributing to the cleaning up of the sport. Let's stop glamorizing this bullshit Omerta nobody talks crap. <laughs> Anything else, sir? Because it is, in fact, a load of crap. And, ha and any law enforcement personnel will tell you that. How do you think they get people in jail? Anyway, so you can get my thoughts on that. And uh, this, coming sun uh, this coming Sunday will be the 411 Ground and Pound radio show previewing the big one. UFC 229 is upon us. And, uh, again, it's the big one. It's Conor McGregor versus Khabib Nurmagomedov. Assuming neither of them pulls out between now and then. But I'm, I'm hoping uh, Jimmy Hart's Hall of Fame Tiki Bar, uh, Hall of Fame uh, Bar and Tiki Deck, where they got the uh, NFL package and the Taters, uh, ha will be playing that uh, on one of their TVs while I'm there with my wife that weekend. It won't. You don't think so? Well, hang on. Where, where is this specifically? Jimmy Hart. Oh, Jimmy yeah, Hart's no, no, no. Hall of Where Fame. Where is that located? Oh, uh, Daytona. Daytona? Aruba, Jamaica, 
Ooh, I want to take they the might. I mean, it, it is Connor. Bahama, come on, pretty mama. Right. We've Largo, now gotten to the point Montego. where Sleepy Clyde the Mark has started singing, and that's how we know we've hit the end of the show. <laughs> Baby, why don't we go down to Kokomo? We'll you, get there you want, fast. You want to stop, and then because we'll if you don't stop, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join in, and my singing voice is just the worst. That's where we want to go. Way down in Kokomo. So, again, so you can tune in to hear myself, and I believe Jeff will be previewing 229, so that'll be fun. Again, Connor's back. He's fighting Khabib. Biggest fight in UFC history in all likelihood. Uh, Tony Ferguson's back, and also on that card, and I'm really looking forward to that. He's fighting Anthony Pettis. He will carve him up like a Thanksgiving turkey. Uh, The rest of the card's meh. The rest of the card's really, really kind of meh but if you're going to have a top heavy card those two as the top two fights is not the worst top heavy card you could put together so tune in for that should be a lot of fun uh, I think that's it for me again I'll be back over the course of the next several weeks I'm off next week but after that it's uh, yeah it's a lot of me a lot of me I'm so sorry <laughs> alright with that said uh, thank you for joining us on a TV party tonight for Iron Fist Season 2. Be well, be safe, and behave. Firefighter Raphael Poirier for Firehouse Subs, introducing the new Firehouse Pub Steak Sub with savory steak, crispy fried onions, and our rich Belgian beer cheese sauce. On tap for a limited time. Order yours at firehousesubs.com today. Remember, a portion of every sub you buy helps provide life saving equipment for first responders. Firehouse Subs, enjoy more subs, save more lives. Limited time only, plus tax, participating locations. Firehouse Subs will donate a minimum of $1 million in 2018 to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation by donating 0.13% of every purchase.